This week in my Todoist video, it's all about organising projects. Hello and welcome to another edition of my Working With Todoist series. My name is Carl Pauline and in this week's episode it's all about the different ways that you can organise your projects. Now projects can be big, they can be small, they can be medium sized and particularly for those big projects it can help if you can disorganise them into different stages so that it makes viewing and reviewing your projects so much easier. And this week I'm going to show you four or five different ways that you can do that with Todoist. Now before I go into Todoist I would just like to say if you are brand new to Todoist I have a free online course that will take you through setting up your very own Todoist and get you started very very quickly. So take a check of that. It, the details for that course are actually in the show notes. Secondly, if you do get any value from this video then please help me by hitting that like button below and if you want to get the latest tips and tricks on using Todoist then subscribe to my channel. Okay, let's go straight into Todoist now and I'll show you the different ways you can organize your projects. Okay, first up, one of the best ways to organize a very long project is to create what we call subheadings or non-completable headings. Now what you've got here is I've actually got a, a completable task right here which is one way of doing it and underneath I have, so this would be to develop an online course, this is just a template that I was playing around with and so what we have here is we've got the the pre-production, we've got production and then we've got post-production and then of course we've got marketing. So this is actually a long list of tasks and if you were to go in there with just a random set of tasks it's going to be overwhelming. So one of the best ways to do it is to actually create these subheadings and then sub-projects, under, sub-tasks underneath. Now the beauty of doing it this way is also that when you do complete a task they just disappear, they don't disappear. So you can see they're showing complete but they're still there. If these were normal projects they would disappear completely. So if I completed this one here the whole thing disappears. Now I'm going to undo that now because I don't want to do that. But as you can see they've now greyed out but I can also uncheck them. So that's one way of doing it. The other way of doing it of course is to create this, this title as a non-completable task and the best way to do that in my opinion, just my opinion, is to put the asterisk at the front and hit save. Now this is non-completable. I can't complete it. And that's one way of doing it as well. So there's a couple of ways that you can do that. So this will really clean up a complex project. Next up is to use the calls and emails labels. Let's just go into my labels. So I've got up here calls here uh, and I've got my email here. Now the reason why I've got that here is because a lot of the time calls do not actually need to be done on a specific day but what I do find is is that people tend to think oh I don't want to forget about this so they add a date but the date is not meaningful it doesn't actually have to be done on that date. So one of the best ways to do this is to create the label calls so any calls that you have to make and you can do the same for email like I've got here and none of these except for one has a date because it actually has to be done today. But the others don't have a date and they can be done at any time. There's no real rush if you like. So the way to do this is just create the label, email, on calls. But then make sure that you pin it to the top. So what we've got here is I've got my calls and emails here. So I can see the number right there. So it's every time I'm in to do it, I know I've got three calls to make. I know I've got three emails to write. It's there. It's a reminder to tell me. I don't need to date it. I don't need it to clutter up my today view. They're there. I can see them and I know I have to do it. And that's one of the best ways of avoiding having to have too many tasks in your today view. <clears throat> and the way to add to a uh, favourite is simply just click on the three dots. If, sorry, go back here. Click on the three dots right here 
and these are already in actually so I'll, I'll do it for communications and you'll see I get this extra one here which is add to favorites you click that and it will appear in your favorites menu okay next up is to use flag filters to focus in on your most important task of the day now I covered this a little bit in last week's episode my today's focus and my today's objectives now essentially this is my demo account so it's not there's not that many stuff in there or you can imagine this is towards the end of the day but essentially what I've created here is a daily workflow I start with my objectives they're here I can check that I will only see the two objectives I've got for the day that's my two plus eight prioritization system and then once I've checked that I can move into my today's focus which would include my today's objectives and I spend the rest of the day there. When I finish that out, I can move into my golden 10, which will tell me what I've got scheduled for tomorrow that I've decided using flags what are important. Quite simply, and I say I covered this last week. And I did give you these last week, but basically the filter is very simple for today's objectives. The filter is today and P1. By the way, you probably noticed if you've updated to the latest version of Todoist, we now have a new edit filter little change but actually I think this is a lot better it makes it a lot easier to do so the filter query is today and p1 that means p1 flag that's the easy one today's focus is actually just as easy if I just go into there and edit the filter today's focus is today and exclamation mark which means not p4 so nothing that doesn't have a flag and that's a really good way of just creating that daily workflow so you stay focused on what is important to you and the final one which is to plan the next day before you finish the day using the next seven day view and this is really good go into the next seven day view right up here and you can go down and you can look at your list and you can see what you have scheduled over the next seven days and so if you think oh well tomorrow is going to be an easy day you look at your calendar and you notice that tomorrow is going to be an easy day you can pull things up from another day you can sort of say oh i'm going to, i can bring the office furniture ordering up to thursday or, or you can move move it to monday but if you're doing this every single day you just view your next seven day views it keeps you focused in on what's coming up and you can make decisions of whether they're still relevant or not relevant so there you go there's just a few things that you can do that will just to help you keep things organized and re help to reduce a little bit of the overwhelm that you probably find often if you just focused in on today view because the today view can fill up with a lot of tasks particularly if you've been randomly adding dates that don't really have much meaning or they're not meaningful on that particular day I hope you found this useful it's just a little bit of a recap but these are always useful to help you just to stay focused in on what is truly important to you well thank you very much for watching this episode it just remains for me now to wish you all a very very productive week thank you very much for watching this video now have I got something special to tell you about the Time and Life Mastery version 3 course has launched. Now this course is transformative. It will transform your life. If you find that your life is drifting from one day to the next and that you feel that you're not actually achieving your goals, then this course is going to show you how to change that. It's going to show you how to identify what is truly important to you. It's going to show you how to find what it is you want out of life and then show you the steps that you need to take in order to get there. This course is amazing. The feedback I've got from versions one and version two have just been tremendous. It has helped so many people and I want this opportunity to tell you that it can do the same for you. I hope you will take a look at the course, have a go, take the course, and start transforming your life today. This course will do that for you. Take a look, get yourself enrolled, and hopefully I'll see you in the course.